okay so as I wasn't that happy with my uh, Super Pi 32M uh, result as well as with the uh, other results apart from the Super Pi 1M with the 3770K on LN2 I started investigating so uh, uh, I think the issue was in the BIOS so I used a retail BIOS from December of 2012 so uh, I think these uh, extreme overclocking uh, uh, oriented BIOSes uh, are better for uh, like pure overclocking purposes they aren't even available on the Asus website so uh, you have to download them from uh, sites like hardware bot or extreme systems and the reason why the OC key didn't work was that uh, uh, Solitan uh, another user at our Finnish uh, tech uh, uh, media website forums who sent me this motherboard sent me a wrong OC key so he sent me an OC key that was uh, sold with Rampage for Extreme so it has the firmware for Rampage for Extreme that obviously doesn't work with the Maximus 5 Extreme so uh, the firmware for Rampage for Extreme is 1.003 and I think the correct version of firmware for this particular board is 1.005 so uh, now I'm trying to look where to get that particular firmware and if I cannot then I need to buy uh, another OC key separately so but I have to be careful that I get the correct version but anyway so uh, now I have the 0022 BIOS flashed in running uh, Maximus 5 Extreme on water with the same CPU uh, Patriot uh, Viper 2 Sector 5 2500 Cas9 MEMS so the same one same sticks I used on LN2 and uh, now the performance seems good so I'm trying to reproduce my situation but now on water so uh, I'm running to single core on the CPU so you can see one core one thread enabled but look at this performance so SuperPi 32M has passed and the result is 6 minutes 17.875 now uh, if you go to uh, the uh, Ivy Bridge low uh, clock SuperPi 32M challenge page on hardware bot. Uh, this you can quickly note that this is the fastest uh, result made with uh, ambient cooled CPU and memories. The previous ambient cooled top result was by WebSmile from Germany at uh, like 6 minutes 17.98 seconds. And, uh, all the other scores above it are made with LN2 memories like uh, memories running on LN2 at 2600 plus with CAS7 like 7106 like Elbita BBSC sticks and so on so this is a very good result so uh, based on this result we can conclude that running just uh, one core active on the CPU doesn't have that much negative uh, impact on performance so uh, it means that it's very worth it to retry the CPU on LN2 because we got the CPU running SuperPi 32M at 7.12 gigahertz quite easily. So that's 60 megahertz higher than Andre Yang. So uh, there's a chance I could actually take the SuperPi 32M record with the 3770K unless something dies and uh, unless something goes badly wrong so uh, it's a saying so here is the full list of uh, memory speed and timing so actually the IMC isn't that bad so uh, I uh, understood what issues I had on the memory uh, or during my LN2 attempt so uh, at the moment I'm running uh, close to 2710 megahertz on the memory 8, 12, 8, 28 command rate 1 and you can see Maximus 5 Extreme BIOS is 0022 from September of 2012 so this is the last extreme overclocking BIOS if I'm correct and here is the full list of timings if you are interested so TRFC of 88 DRAM refresh interval uh, I cannot set higher than 43,000 in the BIOS but I can set higher using the mem tweak its software so the key is this particular timing so cast write latency 8 works just fine with low voltage but if I set 6 which is the highest performing one it really requires a lot of memory voltage so that was my issue why I thought I just have IMC limit but it was just on the memory so uh, yeah so uh, it has been very worth it 
to uh, really try the performance at 5 gigahertz uh, challenge speed. So now we know that the performance is great, even with just one core running. So uh, I really look forward to trying this CPU once again on LN2. I have a, a custom IHS made by Bart for this CPU and uh, I might actually use the uh, F1 Dark CPU container instead of the uh, T-Rex because the T-Rex is just so huge uh, I'm not like fully confident that uh, it's sitting 100% well on the CPU like uh, it can easily uh, touch some of the heat sinks or the caps near the CPU that, so that's why I was running the container sideways so just saying so I might use the F1 Dark when running just one core on the CPU there's uh, pretty much no difference between two different containers because there's like next to uh, no load at all on the CPU, like very minimal load, but uh, I'm sure you get the idea. So uh, this is pretty much my uh, conclusion. It was very hard to tune this CPU or these memories on uh, this CPU and on this motherboard. So uh, uh, running memories high is very tricky on this board. So uh, I've been doing like uh, this whole day trying these memories and some other memory sticks on this board, but I finally got a good result, so to say. So, not sure what was my issue, so just need to find OC key and let's try this again. I really want to try the SuperPi 32M record, even if we have to put some cold on the memories. I think uh, just uh, minus 80 would be uh, enough on the memories to get like Cas7 working with these sticks at uh, even like 2700 plus. So uh, for some reason there's a DRAM voltage cap of 1.92 volts on the bars, so that's not enough. So these memory sticks scale up to like 2.1, even on air cooling. So uh, that's an issue, so not sure if I could bypass that limit, but it uh, doesn't really matter. So uh, let's see what happens later when I get a chance to try this CPU again on LN2. But uh, for now, yeah, thanks for watching this uh, very short update video and uh, I will see you on the next one.